The following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome, everybody, to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, and squeezably soft host. As always, we'd like to come to you at this time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. Wow. Well, uh, what a difference a day makes. Uh, I thought we might be pushing 2400 on the S&P cash today. I think still we've got some uh, room to run to the upside come uh, early next week. Uh, saw some fairly big moves um, not only from military action, which is normally bullish. Uh, I'm trying to remember actual any kind of shooting that saw a market go significantly down back in the 1940s. Normally, the markets would sell off until the shooting started. Uh, that kind of worked for the first Gulf War and the uh, second Gulf War. And... Uh, just about everything, uh, Grenada, Panama, uh, everybody gets a little nervous, and then it starts, and then everybody kind of looks and goes, uh, well, what are we supposed to do with this? Well, it changed nothing, and they go right back to doing whatever they were doing before. Anyway, S&P is up five points. We tried to push down 223.50 on the S&P cash. Volume did not come in. Only 1.74 billion shares on the New York Consolidated Tape. As we speak, uh, volume not all that exciting on the uh, na on the uh, Nasdaq either. Uh, I suspect we're going to keep uh, going back up to that 2,400 area. And if we continue with light volume, then I think you might have a better case for putting your uh, bear claws on, maybe even eating a few. Uh, anyway. Uh, just not much happening out here. Of course, huge moves. I mean, huge swings uh, early on in the day. Uh, you know, we saw some fairly low lows uh, overnight in the dollar. Uh, that went up fairly high to about 175 cents on the dollar index. Then we plummeted on the news at 8.30 on the jobs numbers and went down 35 cents. That lasted all of about 30 minutes. We're right back up and pushing back higher. Uh, that meant that we were going to see some huge moves in the gold market. And uh, that's kind of what we had. Uh, gold just uh, eh, 12.55 now. I think it was, I'd have to go back and look. I think I saw 12.72 for a minute. Um, so we're up two, two bucks on gold, not a horrible day out there, but normally sells off by the end of the day. Silver off 30, uh, 28 cents. Uh, of course, uh, the big winner in commodities, uh, least so far is oil. It is up 50 cents going into a little bit more, uh, of a, uh, unknown condition. The strong dollar pretty much putting the kibosh, that's a technical word, on, uh, higher gold prices today. So what do we have? We got a lot of, uh, I'm going to call it kind of a lumpy market. Um, there are the quick and the dead. And uh, as I've said for what, two weeks now, uh, everything that looks like I want to be in is uh, energy right now. There's not a lot of other good stocks giving signals. Yesterday, we also had, um, was it a caller? I don't think it was caller. It was a uh, somebody else asking about whether the socks would break down. I don't think so. And I, it was very interesting to see that Taiwan Semiconductor uh, ordered five billion dollars worth of stuff to build chips with. That's going to continue to ripple on out to all the com companies that actually supply big foundries like Taiwan Semiconductor. But uh, not a small order for uh, for the silicon 
and chip making businesses. And that keeps uh, going around kind of in a circle chasing uh, like a tiger chasing its tail. Uh, just very tough for me to see right now. Now, maybe uh, push a little higher. We get to 2400 on the S&P cash and I see something different. But it just right now does not look to me like anything wants to roll over in this market. And uh, yeah, you know, don't know what you don't know. Maybe something else happens come Monday, but I don't see it. Uh, what else do we have going on? Well, we like to start off the day with a little bit of history. That it's all just a little bit of history repeating. And what do we got going on on this day in 1954, talking about world events? President Dwight D. Eisenhower, he says, coins one of the most famous Cold War ward. Can't even speak today. I've had an aneurysm. Cold War phrases when he suggests the fall of French Indochina to the communists could create a domino effect in Southeast Asia. I looked for that speech. I've seen it, but I couldn't find it. Normally you get that kind of stuff all over YouTube. Uh, the so-called domino theory dominated U.S. thinking about Vietnam for the next decade. Sometimes you get a little earworm and you hear something and you just can't get it out of your mind. Sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's bad. I think the uh, domino theory probably on the whole, probably not a good idea to go down the road on. Especially when you talk about all kinds of, um, well, like today, uh, geopolitical events happening. Uh, we saw the use of uh, sarin gas. My belief is that that's probably all the stuff that uh, left a, a, a Iraq um, 10, 12 years ago, all the machines. There was a lot of rumors about all that stuff being pushed up into Syria before we got in there. Uh, good reason why we didn't find much. Although we did find uh, almost 7,000 sarin gas shells that everybody keeps saying that there weren't anything there weren't any weapons of mass destruction um you know we had one little event this week and they had seven thousand oh they had five hundred thousand tons of uranium yellow cake too but no they didn't have any weapons of mass destruction we just uh gotta live in the real world and uh nothing's as black and white especially when we get into politics and geopolitics as one would like to think. There's always a little good and a little bad and fairly and rarely great decisions, only bad and worse decisions that you can make. But on this day in 1954, a great deal of what would happen for the next 40 years was set with the domino theory thinking that uh, if we'd let more countries become a communist, uh, then the whole world would go insane. And probably a little truth to that, maybe even a lot of truth, but not total truth. But uh, not totally false either. On this day in 1954, and uh, echoes even in today of what we do, how we do it, and why we do it. Uh, what else is going on in the market? Let's go ahead and get to some charts. Just, uh, if I can find my chart, where'd my chart go? Oh, come on. Well, thank God we're going to a break. I can find my charts. Uh, the domino theory, yeah. Had nothing to do with dominoes and nothing to do with pizza either. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that 
many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming. See high-definition video giving you crystal clear charts as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Hey, Takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. And we go to the mailbox. Yes, we do. Luscious Lars is saying, I would uh, like to look at uh, Target attempting to hammer out a double bottom. Um, from May 2014 at $50.68 would consider taking a swing trade with tight stop at this level. What do you think? Well, let's go back and look at this just a little bit farther back uh, out here. Uh, well, I think he's talking about $50.68. Is there anything back even farther? Well, the big lows, to me, I see what you're looking at, but the ones that look to me on a bigger time scale that are important are the $51.14 low. Uh, that would be May 28th, 2014. You had a, uh, yeah, and even a lower one on May 5th, 2014 on Target TGT. Uh, uh, you know, you don't have a lot of energy out here. A lot of these retailers look like they're making lows. I just think there's easier money uh, to be had than trying to uh, catch these bounces in retail, even though many of them are bouncing. Uh, my guess is that even if this thing did bounce, it's not going to bounce that much. What you want is some decent consolidation at a price. You want this thing to go sideways for a while and burn out all the people that are short and all the people that are long finally give up selling. Uh, I think that's probably when you want to buy it. I don't see anything in here that uh, shows anything else right now. I see kind of what you're looking at, light, very small arrow trading ranges each day. But you need probably about five more of these candles like you've had uh, today and the last day. And you need to see the volume continue to, you know, maybe get two or three million shares or something. 
get very, very light out here before I would look at it very far. You can be like Luscious Lars and email me at path at tfnn.com or give me a call at 877-927-6648 or put something pithy in the den uh, for me to look at. Uh, I haven't had a lot of time. My computer power supply decided to blow up. I didn't know exactly what the problem was, so I had to... I spent about three hours putting it back together. I haven't had a lot of time to check in with the market, so I'm going to be getting caught up while you are. Uh, we've got a couple of gaps up here in Tesla. Could you get one more? I think you can. Is there anything out here that tells me that this is uh, something is fundamentally changed in their business model? No, they're just borrowing more money. And, um, you know, you get stocks like this. Uh, I bring up iOmega many times. And can it go higher? The answer is yes, possibly. Uh, at what point, though, uh, does this get so ludicrous in value uh, that uh, no one is around when the, uh, the uh, music stops and there aren't enough chairs? Again, this is a uh, you know, stock worth about 40, 45 bucks uh, printing, you know, what, eight, nine times uh, probably any kind of normal value. Uh, just don't see it. Uh, they're going to have to spend a ton of cash. Their debt is a fraction of a penny of what it will be if they actually start selling the amount of cars that they want. So maybe this is not the first company that gets a uh, car company that gets to a billion or a trillion dollar valuation, but maybe the first car company that gets a trillion dollars worth of debt could be. Again, uh, not a lot of people thinking about what's going on under the hood. See what I did with this one? Now pull pop that hood and what you know they're gonna go there's no engine in here <laughs> how's this thing run um it's uh, but stocks I, I i omega for those people that haven't been around for a long time uh was kind of a big phenomena in the mid 90s there was a bunch of guys called the motley fools they got a bunch of people together and started pushing i omega i omega made removable hard drives that you could get maybe 20 gig or not 20 gig 20 megabytes back then uh 50 megabytes 100 megabytes on these carts and at the time there was you know there was just no easy way of uh, changing anything in and out uh i sold a great deal of them uh in the early 90s but the mid 90s everybody just believed that that was what was going to happen uh, that everybody would use these little carts that these guys made, and there was no end to it. When the end did come, it uh, was in about took about nine months for the whole thing to fall apart. And I don't, I see the parallels so strongly in Tesla that I saw with I Omega. You might want to uh, think about that. Doesn't mean that the stock can't go up. And again, yesterday I kind of alluded to the fact that these are virtual companies. For the most part, Tesla is not. It's a real company that has real expenses. It doesn't be able to farm everything out. It's got to build its own factories. And at that point, you start figuring out how much money can something spin off that literally is borrowing a couple billion dollars a year and uh, spending all of it and probably even losing some of the cash in the meantime. But it doesn't matter. Everybody... Uh, likes to chase Beanie Babies, and it doesn't matter what it is, if it's pets.com, there will always be stock in this in the marketplace that uh, basically all reason and logic, just throw it away because the people investing in Tesla could care less. They see the sizzle, and they don't really look to see how fatty the steak is. And uh, one day they will go to take a nice little cut out of it, and find it, nothing but gristle. Yeah, boy, I'm starting to become a poet, and I didn't even know it. Uh, da, 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 what else do we have going on out here? Let's take a look at the market again real quick. Uh, we're up five points in the S&P cash, up 11 points in the uh, NASDAQ. Uh, everything else kind of moving along as we thought we uh, would. Um, you know, still, uh, still just slightly ahead on gold for the day oil continues to just hang out a little bit uh, uh west texas above 52 and change uh, kind of interesting to see that brent 
isn't a little stronger out here today since we're over there playing in the oil patch where they get their oil. Uh, we got natural gas off about seven cents. Not surprising. Uh, there's almost always a short on natural gas if you're long crude. And so uh, you find people uh, selling more natural gas as a natural hedge as crude goes higher. Um, to, to do what else is out there? And that's about it on commodities. Let's check back in. We keep on trying to make higher highs in the uh, dollar today. Right now, printing off at 101.14 on, I th yeah, that's on this contract, isn't it? Yeah. So uh, we'll see how that goes. But, uh, you know, we're not that far. Uh, and now that we're back in 101, I suspect that takes us to 102 and a quarter. Um, fairly quickly, too. We may see that Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. But uh, I suspect there are a ton of people on the wrong side of this trade. And uh, we could see a very short, maybe short-lived, maybe not, move back up to 102 and a quarter. We'll be back after this short time out. But it's long enough for you to pick up the phone and dial 877-927-6648, he said. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Has the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And uh, yeah, let's uh, take a look at here. And eh, not a whole lot of movement. 
uh, up three and a half points on the S&P cash, up seven and a half points on the NASDAQ. And, of course, uh, and what we've talked about before. Uh, wind resorts, of course, a lot about what uh, this has to do with China. Uh, this gap down on the 29th of April in 2015, we've just gotten back up to this lately. Uh, not a huge amount of volume, um, but I think a bet that uh, one of the biggest supporters from uh, of Donald Trump, uh, of course, is win. And seeing some fairly nice uh, movement from the last few weeks as this pushed back up. Uh, earnings were okay, so maybe they've let a few more people in there to gamble. But uh, this could be one of the go-to stocks uh, for the relationships geopolitically uh, with China. I know that uh, they've been uh, meeting right now in the afternoon, so they could come up smiling or grinning, uh, depending on what happens. A lot of people read something into that. Maybe there's actually something they do say, but I don't think that there's much more uh, than uh, the meet and greet for a new president and uh, trying to get the measure of the man from both sides. So I don't think that there's a lot going on out here. But if uh, we were supposed to, or if we were to see a lot of deteriorating action between the two uh, leaders of the most populous and the most powerful country, um, could see a lot more in when uh, this is just hanging up out here. And again, I don't see a lot that says any of these things have failed so far. Uh, let's look at uh, socks itself. We talked about it yeah, yesterday. You know, you had a little doji down. Uh, volume really didn't increase. A little higher out here without a lot of volume. Again, Monday, Tuesday, probably going to be much bigger days out here in the socks. But um, I went through the laundry list of new purchases, and there are a ton. Um, the move to uh, seven nanometer and nine man nanometer manufacturing uh, in most of the Pacific Rim means that almost all these companies that sell things to other country, uh, companies to build chips uh, continue uh, to be on the fast track. Kind of tough to see that, but uh, your initial order of 50 million chips means that you got to have a kind of a decent amount of equipment to build those chips. And, of course, Apple's new chips are going to be, I think, 11 nanometer, maybe 12 nanometer. I forget what I read. But uh, it is a uh, – it's, it's just – I don't see the big story out here. There would have to be an iPhone blowing up or – There'd have to be something else going on, and I just haven't heard uh, any wind of it, and I don't see a lot in the charts. Uh, could we just go sideways for a while? I think that certainly could be an option. Uh, but, uh, again, I don't see anything that says these things are going down. Uh, Apple kind of taking a, a stall here the last three days. Again, a very tough stock uh, with any opportunity for a tax bill coming through and there are 265 or 268 billion dollars being repatriated from this country. Uh, just seems like a nightmare. What if they use it all to repurchase their shares? What if they give it to everybody in a lump sum distribution? All the things that they can do with that cash, whether or not their product selling very well, means that uh, this thing is uh, kind of a no touch for shorts as long as there's a breath and a tax bill that brings all that cash back. Uh, let's take a look at IBM out here because this one's kind of been uh, the one that has had a nice trend down, unlike many of them. Uh, today, again, lighter volume, 2.1 million shares. We're now at the very bottom of this big candle from the 24th of January where it came up on 7 million shares. I think you're probably going to find support, maybe one more day down in the 170 area. There just doesn't seem a lot. Uh, of uh, real push down uh, in these markets. But uh, again, not a lot of uh, willing buyers out here either. So just kind of a quiet market. A lot of Gartley patterns uh, for a uh, Thursday. Wanted to see how some of these did. And uh, true to form, uh, this company, AGRO, had a nice little pop. Um, a little bit too much energy for my taste from the March 17th high to the April 6th low, if you look at it. 
but a nice, uh, very looking symmetrical uh, Gartley pattern on that. If you want to take a look, uh, starting back on December 16th, AKRX, uh, which is Acorn. Is this one? Uh, yeah, oh, it, uh, it popped up pretty well. Uh, Alexion Pharmaceuticals. Uh, this one uh, also not looking too bad. This one in this biotech sector could really run uh, in the next w couple of weeks. I've seen some of these Gartley patterns, and they do look good. Uh, you had a lot of energy from the X to A points. The energy in many of these uh, Gartleys in the pharmaceutical biotech business from the C to D points have come back on lighter energy. Um, along with a little doji out here today on light volume, one of the better looking ones out here went maybe a little more than you'd like a 782 retracement, uh, but uh, not a bad looking chart out here for Gartley patterns. Uh, what else do we have? CVR refining. Uh, this thing looks uh, fairly decent. Energy, again, you want to look at the X to A and then the C to uh, D points back here and see that on this one, the energy is off about uh, just a little less than 25%. Uh, from this February 28th high back into the low that we saw yesterday, right at nine bucks. Um, energy's down. Again, refiner's not the biggest right now, but uh, these uh, may be the ones ready to turn around next. CW, which is Curtis Wright Corporation, nice Gartley pattern. Energy a little bit too much for my um, my blood back from the C uh, to the D point. But it is 20% less. I would have liked a little bit more out here. But a good-looking Gartley pattern. Again, the X to A, uh, fairly nice and sharp, uh, fairly symmetrical in the wings. Um, kind of the things that I like on that. G V, or excuse me, G S V Gold Standard Ventures. Kind of a nasty-looking one here. It didn't look all that good. Uh, what is that? M N T X uh, needs a little bit more. Uh, downside out here this one doesn't look like the risk reward is quite there yet let's uh, give it here again mana text international and uh, take a look at this um i do like it energy from the c to d leg is fairly light you've got a gap down here at 570 which is where this thing may go uh maybe 580 i just uh, with that gap there I think it's probably the more important part, but uh, a nice Gartley pattern if energy and volume remain rather light, uh, 575 would be very interesting on that. MRTN, which is Martin Transportation. A little Gartley on this guy, volume's not exciting, but I do like that this came back to this gap uh, from the 10th of February, 150,000 shares, you know, pretty light volume out here, but a light volume stock begin with look at a couple more of these and then get into uh, some other stocks here today before the end of the weekend up three points in the s p cash if you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com.
If you're looking to unearth a new financial resource and diversify your financial portfolio, consider the new Market Safe Core Commodity CD from EverBank. This five year US dollar denominated CD gives you exposure to four equally weighted commodities gold, copper, WTI oil, and sugar in one powerful CD. With no pricing caps, you can potentially earn an unlimited upside payment at maturity if the commodities increase in value across semi annual pricing dates. And should the opposite occur, your principal is 100% protected. Keep in mind, returns are based on CD performance. There's no annual percentage percentage yield or periodic rate of interest on this index CD. Don't miss out. With certain commodities on the rebound, now is the time to take advantage. The March 23rd funding deadline will be here before you know it. So call 1-855-750-4051 or visit everbank.com slash TFNN for the CD's term sheet and other important product details and disclosures. Once more, that's 1-855-750-4051 or visit everbank.com slash TFNN. This advertisement is sponsored content. Everbank is a member FDIC. TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile-based scanner in the industry, powered by the acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. And uh, what, uh, an hour and 20 minutes to go in the trading day and 1.92 billion shares. Normally, we like to start the show with 2.2 uh, billion shares. So this is going to be a very light day back down test the 23.50 low of the day and uh, reject it. Uh, so I'm thinking that we do have at least a decent shot of going for the 2400 on the S&P cash again. Um, is there a real standout? Uh, probably the only thing that seems to me to be standing out is energy. And uh, that's just because of the geopolitical risk. Uh, is there anything else really going on out there? We're just looking at the dollar back over 101, 101 and 15 cents. Looks like it's back into this trading range, which would take it back up to 102.25. Uh, we had kind of a nice uh, shot on gold today, but uh, as Friday does seem to come, uh, the proverbial sell-off back to 12.55. So is anybody getting rich uh, sitting on anything? And the answer is no. Uh, they're the quick and the dead for at least today, but I suspect we're going to continue to kind of slide back up uh, for a little bit longer. Uh, normally, if you get this far into a year, the uh, break does not happen till about May 1st. So we, you know, we're, what are we, uh, 7th of April? So uh, we could see this thing uh, continue to go maybe to the end of the month. Uh, and that's why I'm thinking maybe that 2400 gets hit up there, maybe even goes a little higher, everybody quits shorting, and then maybe you got a chance to pull the trigger short. I'm just thinking you're kind of early. And again, as I've said often on this show, uh, if I short something whether right or wrong, I'm normally short two minutes early, three hours early, three days early, three weeks early, or three months early. And the question is, when you're early, you got to figure out after you're wrong for a little bit, even if it's three minutes, just uh, are you wrong for three minutes or three hours or three days or three weeks? And right now, I'm leaning on the three weeks, thinking that we go right into the first of May before we start seeing other things. We've seen it in big years before where we've had massive turnarounds. That May 5th high on everything in 2008 seems to be kind of a, a target. I don't see anything now that gives me uh, anything other than the thought that maybe that could happen, 
uh, but no evidence so far. Had a question to look at Insight, I-N-C-Y. Uh, make some dermatological drugs. You had a nice sign of strength take off. Not a lot of volume uh, or sign of strength after this. Ideally, you'd want to get this thing uh, right in the middle of its gap. That'd be 125 bucks. <laughs> Do you get it? I don't know. The energy's a little bit more than you would like on this first leg down, but my guess is that if I was going to buy this, it would the worst reward just does not come around until you get to 125 on light volume. So I don't know if that would be it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I'm just uh, I know that I'll eventually be right uh, above 2400. Yes, I think next week we see 2400. So got any other comments? You can always call me and tell me why I'm all wet, although I feel very dry. At 877-927-6648, or you can email me at path at tfnn.com. Uh, um, what else do we have out here? And again, I'm kind of uh, putting some stuff back together uh, bit by bit after my computer blew up today. So I'm kind of a little bit behind the uh, ball game. Um, let's, uh, didn't look at Google yet today. And uh, see how it reacted to this news out here. Uh, you know, you're down on kind of light volume. Don't see a lot out here in the way of energy on this day. Um, could you be making a little ABC for one more time at the high? Yeah, yeah you could. This is probably the weakest <clears throat> of the big fang stocks, in my opinion. Uh, it had more things going against it, especially in Europe and the rest of the world. Uh, this thing is a punching bag. Uh, da, 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 da. As do I see a whole lot? I mean, again, if I was really thinking this market was going to go down, uh, I would look for a ton of weakness in Google, and I just don't see it today. My guess is that one will give us a some kind of test of a high uh, back up here, make a triple top, and that will be the signal to pull the trigger. Let's take a quick look at Microsoft. Da, 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 da. Yeah, nothing in it. You had kind of a down day and spike in Microsoft. It's back into it again. Nothing out here that makes a trend change or uh, a break in this market. Now, can it come along? And would I change my opinion if it did? If the facts change, do you change your opinion? Well, I do. Uh, New Relic. This is a very interesting stock at 40 bucks. Uh, spiked back on January 25th uh, with 4.2 million shares. And talk about light volume. 2 million shares uh, a couple of days ago. Yesterday, 600,000 shares. Today, just 200,000 shares going into that. It hasn't broken the $40.10 January 25th high. But uh, there are a few stocks out here that uh, if everything did change, um, I'm more than willing to... Uh, find a faster horse to the downside. I just continually do not see it. Uh, WDR, I got an email coming in. It says, uh, why do I think 2400? I just think that as long as energy can hold this market up, it becomes incredibly tough for the people in the weak stocks uh, to hold. And I think we're going to get a little bit of a short squeeze. Uh, and that's probably just going to be on sector rotation, whether it's uh, from technology into, um, you know, razor blades and other things that people get. They're going to get out of some of the stocks. They're going to get into others. They're not going away. And those that kind of move back in maybe the energy and other things that we actually use and consume uh, is probably a bigger thing. And you always get kind of one last run, and it's all the people crowding into those safety trades at the end. And I haven't seen a big sign that uh, we've had some kind of blow off top yet in energy or in the Procter and Gambles or the rest of them. And I think that's kind of, if you're betting on the last leg, I think you want to look for those stocks to go up and basically top out too. Uh, quick request to take a look at Amazon. Da -da -da. Again, is there anything out here that makes me think today that you've got any kind of signal? The answer is no. You're basically still on the three by three displaced moving average. You went above it on the 28th, 
and you've stayed above it. Even today, you pierced it, but you're going to probably close back above it. The first sign that I even think that you've brought some kind of trend line uh, to the upside on Amazon is going to be a close below this three by three displaced moving average uh, and nothing. Uh, it pierced it and it closed back above it. And as long as this thing stays above it, it's going to be kind of tough to see the rest of the market head south. To tell, what else do we have going on out here? Okay, up three points. Still no volume, still no 2 billion shares on the New York Consolidated Tape. We'll get some stocks here for the last little bit. You still have plenty of time. If you call now, 877-927-6648. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And we're going to go to Michael in Toronto. How are you doing today, Michael? Hi, thanks for taking my call. Could you quickly look at the VIX? please, on the daily versus the weekly. Um, okay. Um, I don't have a chart up for it, but... Okay. How about the VXX? What, what, what makes you think that, that a daily and a weekly have anything to do with a VIX? Well, it's a trend. The trend. I'm looking at the trend. Yeah, the trend doesn't matter. It's an oscillator. <laughs> Is that so? It's, it's the truth. What The VIX... 
is a moving average sample, two moving averages, a smaller one and a larger one. I would suggest that anyone that wants to really get into this, uh, go to the white paper about how the VIX is calculated and build a spreadsheet on and watch exactly how it works. It is the price of the out of the money calls and puts, just the premiums, not the yeah. in the money ones, yeah. right? Right. And it's a shorter one versus a longer one. And that's it. It doesn't, the trend, I, I think a lot of people are very confused about it since it, it, they, it's an oscillator, but it's, it's an oscillator from two different time frames. And uh -huh. you, there, there's a, a huge ability for the long time, time frame to swamp the short one and the short one to swamp the long one. Uh, if you want a link to it, there is a great white paper that shows how it's calculated on the, uh, I think it's the CBOE. I will yeah. be more than glad to send you the link on it, but there's about 20 pages. But right. again, if, you, if you're thinking that it is just like a regular ETF and there's something going on, I, I have to say this is one of the few products where it is much more like the summation index, which again has nothing to do with um, the immediate price of a product. Mm -hmm. uh, in that it is a longer and shorter time oscillator. It is not a, a predictor of actual price. And again, short and long term trends can cancel themselves out or swamp one and the, one and the other. So again, there are a few times when you can trade the VIX, but what you want to do is make sure that both of them, i.e. the long and short term, are all washed out for as high as you think they can get. When you get okay. one on one side and one on the other, they tend to cancel themselves out. And why uh, a lot of times when you look at the uh, UVXY and stuff, mm -hmm. it can really go counter to what you think that it should go. Mm -hmm. uh, even with the uh, maybe the short term upside in premiums for the uh, for the short term. Yeah, but, well, you look at the term structure, okay? Yeah. Um, back to your 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 thesis there about sell in May and go away. So you're you're looking for some, for something around the first week of May. I, I, what I'm call. saying what I'm saying is I don't see anything until then right now. Yeah. Maybe it would develop. Maybe it does not. But right now I'm I I spent a lot of time looking at charts till about eleven o'clock last night. Uh -huh. And I was saying, okay. Where, is, where are these stocks that are hitting lows and just blowing up and going lower? And most uh -huh. all of them, as we've talked about this on the show this week, have been uh -huh. like L brands. They've all had these huge low volume uh, piercings of uh, heavy volume down days. Yeah. Never got any volume and they've popped violently back into the trading range. So I just don't see, I don't see it. I can remember though that there was a dip in that 2008 uh, low, and then some of the other ones I've traded, where mm -hmm. May was, where May 1st, May 2nd, really started seeing the signals of a top of the market. And right now, I don't see anything that changes that in the next couple of weeks. So I'm thinking May okay. might be the so next no time we work, see some no kind of high. Work, no, no Bradley turn date doesn't factor into your decision, huh? None. None. See oh, you Monday. Okay. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters.
You're watching Tiger TV.